So le then there is other, another set of clocks which are known as, which we had covered, touched a little bit, uh, but we'll talk about it in more detail also, is something which is known as logically exclusive clocks. Okay. The clocks, logically exclusive clock means that they are exclusive clocks, which means either one clock is going to be present or other clock is going to be present. But the reason for exclusivity is because of some logic present in the design. Okay. So it's that's why it's called logical exclusivity. Typical way, only uh, example I would say is when the clocks are going through MUX, like C1 and C2, when they're going through MUX, after this MUX, only one of the clock can stay, right? Because of the select condition, either select will be selecting one C1 or it will be selecting C2. So these clocks are known as logically exclusive clocks. Now, for logically exclusive clocks, when you are doing STA, STA will by default will propagate both the clocks here. It's it C1 will reach here, C2 also will reach here, and of course C1 will reach here, and C2 will also reach here. So basically, you will have two sets of timing paths, right? C1 to C1, C1 to C2, and then C2 to C1 and C2 to C2, right? Because all two clocks possibilities are here, two clocks possibilities are here. If you don't tell STA anything, your timing tool anything, it will time all these four cases. So set up and hold, it will calculate with all these possibilities. Now, you know in your design, right? This is coming from your mux. So either C1 will be selected or C2 will be selected, right? So these possibilities, which I'm marking now, C1 to C2, or C2 to C1 actually cannot happen in your design, right? Since these possibilities cannot happen in your design, how do you tell these to the STA tool? You tell that by specifying these clocks as logically exclusive. So when you specify these clocks are logically exclusive, that means it's kind of a false path that don't time between these clocks. But it's basically a better way of saying it that these two clocks are logically exclusive. So where either one will be selected or other will be selected. So you don't have to, STA does not have to time path across the clock. So C1 to C2, C2 to C1 paths need not be timed. Only possible paths are C1 to C1 and C2 to C1 to C1 or C2 to C2. So this is the meaning of log logically exclusive clocks. But if you see, right, as if this is a long wire, both of these clocks can be present together in the design. So let's say if C1 is coming here from some place, C2 is coming from some place. And of course, when you say when, when you there are wires, right, there'll be crosstalk. So C1 and C2 can have crosstalk with each other in this region of the design. Of course, after this, only one is selected. So no crosstalk is possible. But in this region of the design, there can be crosstalk possibilities between these two clocks. Okay. Any any question on uh, logically exclusive clocks? Is the understanding clear? Uh, Vikas, I have a question. Yep. Like we can do set case analysis here, right? Yeah. So you can do, let's say if you do a set case analysis of zero or one, what will happen? Finally, you have to time STA with both the clocks, right? C1 should also propagate, C2 will also do. So you can do set case analysis of zero or one, but then you will have to do two STA runs, one with S equal to zero and one with S equal to one. Otherwise, your timing analysis will not be complete. So you can set a constant, but then you need to make sure you do analysis with both cases. So then you'll have to do two STA runs in one constraint, S will be zero. In another constraint, S will be one. Okay. Okay. Any anyone else? Uh, Sunil, did you have some questions? Okay. So let me continue. So this is logically exclusive clocks. Now, there is another kind of clocks. Yeah. Yeah, Sunil. Uh, you had some question. Sunil, I'm not able to hear you. Maybe you can tie if you are 
if you are having issue with the mic, you can type your question in the chat window. I'll try to address it. Or if you're able to unmute. OK, you can just type your question in the chat window. Uh, I'll, I'll cover from there. Meanwhile, let me continue. Uh, so uh, uh, so another case is physically exclusive clock. OK, and as the name says, physically means they cannot exist together in the design. OK, so we'll come back to our same mux thing where physically exclusive means that let's say you have this mux, right? In input of the mux was getting C1 and C2. Uh, uh, OK, so the question is, do we need to maintain different constraints for CDC and S3? No, as in, uh, uh, C, uh, you don't need to maintain different constraints for CDC and STA. Uh, C, uh, STA, whatever constraints you are, STA should be able to typically use uh, for CDC as well. The only thing CDC cares about knowing is uh, even if you have clock muxing, right? As in, these clock, if these clocks are synchronous, they are synchronous both in CDC and STA. If they are asynchronous, they are syn asynchronous in CDC and STA. As CDC only cares about asynchronous clocks, and STA cares about only synchronous clocks. That's the difference. But you don't need to have different constraints. Because finally, as in STA also, you have to do with both when S equal to 0 and S equal to 1. And CDC also, you have to make sure when S is equal to 0, you type, do a CDC analysis. And when S is equal to 1, then also you will do CDC analysis. Because you don't want to miss anything. Does that answer your question, Sunil? OK. So physically exclusive clocks, right? Let's say I have two clocks, generated clock 1 and generated clock two defined on the mux here. Now, what happens then, right? Let's say, let me magnify this mux. I have clock C1 here coming here, clock C2 coming here. But at the mux output, I will define G, generate clock one and generate clock two. Generated clock one is a divided version of, divide by one version of generate clock one. Generate clock two is a divide by one version of clock two. Now, since they are defined here as in uh, this. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this generated clock, uh, as you said, it is divided by 1 by C1. So what is the benefit of uh, doing this? Yeah, I'm coming to that. Okay. So when you define that, now what you can say is between these two clocks, this is a single net in the design, right? On a single net, really, you can only have one clock. You are only having two clocks because you don't want to do separate STA run, like with S equal to 0 and S equal to 1. You don't want to do two separate STA runs. So you basically not specified any constant here. And both the clocks are coming here. And that's where you're creating generic clock 1, generic clock 2. Now, generated clock 1 and generated clock 2, but at the end in silicon, either this net will have generated clock 1 when select is equal to 0, or this net will have generated clock 2 when select is equal to one. So physically, only one clock is going to be there. So physically, only one clock is going to be there. Now, what happens basically when you tell STA these clocks are physically exclusive? So of course, physically exclusive clocks, it will not time paths between them. So basically, the only paths which will be possible will be GC1 to GC1. So basically, physically exclusive is, in one sense, similar to logic exclusive that you will have only these paths possible, GC1 to GC1 or GC2 to GC2. Cross paths will not be possible. But in addition to that, since these are on only on one net, there is no crosstalk possible also between these two clocks. So if the clocks are physically exclusive, then crosstalk is also not possible. Between logically exclusive clocks, crosstalk is possible because they are, they are logically exclusive. So in some part of the design, they may be present together. And that's why crosstalk is possible. But physically exclusive, crosstalk is not possible. So physically clock exclusive clocks, typically you will be defining on the clocks which are on the same net. Logically exclusive typically will be clocks which basically are mugs together and go somewhere. 
so that is the only difference in terms of st analysis if you say two clocks are logical exclusive cross talks are not is not possible physical exclusive cross talk is not possible but physical exclusive will not have cross talk between them cross clock paths are not possible in both like gc1 to gc2 gc2 to gc1 whether you specify clocks are logically exclusive or physically exclusive these paths are not possible but if they are logically exclusive cross talk is possible but if they are physically exclusive cross talk is also not possible from like these are the semantics of uh, saying logically exclusive versus physically exclusive now why would you define these two clocks as new clocks here gc1 and gc2 because c1 and c2 you cannot say they are logically exclusive uh, they are physically exclusive because cross talk is possible between them but if you define new clocks here gc1 and gc2 which are divided by 1 now you can say cross talk is not possible and that will basically help improve the pessimism in the so you will have less pessimism because it will not unnecessarily calculate sta tool will not unnecessarily calculate cross talk between them so uh, komal that is the answer Defi the reason for defining these two clocks gc1 and gc2 is so now you can say they are physically exclusive whereas c1 and c2 you could not say physically exclusive because cross talk is possible between them does that answer your question uh, uh, yes yes thanks yeah. Okay, uh, so I have a yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, so in this physically exclusive clocks, how are uh, we are gonna uh, like uh, add the I/O constraints like input and output delay? Because there are two clocks uh, involved here: uh, C1, C2, G C1, G C2. So just so wanted. If, let's say, so let's say if these are that you can do like you have set input delay, right? Mm -hmm. Set input delay command has a clock option. So you can give clock. Let's say G C1 whatever the delay value you want to give. Then you get a set input delay. Another command you can give clock GC2, whatever the delay value you want to give. And then there is another option called add underscore delay. So using add underscore delay on the same input port, you can add delays with respect to however many clocks you want to add. Okay.